So let's talk about the great toe, everybody's favorite topic, everything you always wanted to know about the Hallux MTP. And the relevance here is mainly related to what's called turf toe. And this is not necessarily something you're going to have to work up acutely on call as an emergency, emergent turf toe, life-threatening turf toe. But it definitely comes up in sports. And um, so it's good to be aware of it and just to understand that this is sort of an evolving um, area and to understand what, you know, what are people talking about when they're describing turf toe. So this is the Hallux MTP, right? We talk about Hallux valgus all the time and bunions and all that fascinating stuff, but this is the first MT uh, metatarsal phalangeal joint. We'll look at injury mechanisms, anatomy, imaging, and a little bit of clinical management. <clears throat> So the football players often get these types of injuries and, and the term turf toe came up, I think in the 1970s where the, the prevalence of the original type of artificial turf um, was increasing. And that was this really short crew cut kind of turf. It was very firm and uh, very good traction on it. So a lot more friction and uh, maybe higher speed activities and uh and so people seem to associate that injury with that type of of playing surface in reality it still occurs and it's not necessarily uh just the playing surface so what what happens well here's here's an athlete getting tackled or maybe doing the tackling here and he's really hyper dorsiflexing this this great toe there's the metatarsal phalanx sesamoids here <clears throat> and normally this is a really strong joint um, and strong soft tissues here. There's another one where a guy's going to go try to make a catch and he actually lands on the foot of a opposing player and hyperdorsiflexes the, uh, the foot. So in the orthopedic terms, they have a, a staging system for turf toe. And, and basically what I want you to take away is that turf toe is, is considered injury of this whole capsulo ligamentous complex along the plantar surface of this great toe, okay? A capsule lig capsulo ligamentous injury is, uh, is turf toe. People have talked about it being, oh, maybe it's just like a really bad ingrown toenail, or maybe it's some osteochondral lesion of the first MTP. And, and those things have been kind of included in turf toe discussions, but, but more recently people are are narrowing it into this capsule ligamentous complex, which I will, I'll go into in a little bit of detail in a second. <clears throat> so the grading of things, this is a clinical grading system where they claim that grade one is so-called attenuation of plantar structures. And it's hard to know how you assess that clinically, but it's like a mild degree of, of injury. Whereas grade two is, is thinking that there's some partial tearing of some structures, and, uh, but not a complete tear. So similarly, like I would map the MRI to a grade one being, oh, there's a little bit of edema. There's really nothing that's discreetly torn grade two as well. There's something that looks like it's discreetly partially torn, but not all the way through versus grade three, where's something like a full thickness tear. It's like a full thickness rotator cuff tear um, of one of the structures. And, and when you get a full thickness tear, some things may retract back. And so another part of the clinical management of the turf toe is the orthopedist may actually do um, exam under fluoroscopy and look at the way the sesamoids track with the first MTP to see if they're coupled or not. Because in a high-grade injury, you may lose that coupling. Okay, so here's our 3D in this one. So <clears throat> great toe, medial and lateral sesamoids, often called the tibial and fibular sesamoids, which are important bones that articulate with the first metatarsal head here the plantar plate. So often we'll talk about plantar plate injuries and the, the plantar plate is this kind of fibrous cartilaginous structure that attaches firmly on the base of the proximal phalanx, goes to kind of envelop the sesamoids and is really a very thick tissue that you can think of as being like, you know, like nature's shoe in a way that protects the, the plantar aspect of the foot. And it's debated and dis, you know, differently described what this plantar plate really is and how intimate it is with different structures. And it, to be honest, it gets very confusing. So we won't drill down on that part specifically, but I'll show you some more of the relevant anatomy here that we can then use to uh, understand MRI appearance. <clears throat> okay, so 
sesamoids, plantar plate, and then you have intermetatarsal ligaments that bind things together that way. You have these tendons, which are the flexor hallucis brevis, the short tendons, and those are intimate with the sesamoids. And they rather continue on to the phalangeal base here. And then you have the flexor hallucis longus here as well, okay? And in addition to these flexors, you have abductor over here and you have adductor over here. It gets really complicated. So I don't need for you to take away all this detailed anatomy, but just to kind of appreciate that it is, it is in fact complicated. These are really nice diagrams. And this is a really good article that's online at this radsource.com um, from fairly recent. And um, so I borrowed some of these images to illustrate because I think they're the best illustrations that I, I have found. This is the plantar aspect of the first MTP. Okay, so distal, proximal. Here's the FHL, flexor hallucis longus tendon, which isn't really part of this, but it's kind of cruising by, so it's good to know that. Um, here's the plantar aspect of that whole capsule ligamentous complex. So you have the sesamoids are sitting in here the flexor hallucis brevis come into each of those sesamoids. You have the abductor coming here, abductor hallucis, and then the adductor here, which it wouldn't be um, convenient to just have one head, so it has to have an oblique head and a transverse head coming in. So basically all these things go and contribute to this thick capsular ligamentous complex that, that stabilizes the plantar aspect of our first MTP. Now, if you look from a dorsal approach and you cut out the first metatarsal head and look down on the sesamoids, the articular aspect, you have medial or tibial sesamoid, lateral or fibular sesamoid. This is kind of the whole plantar plate thing, okay? So you have different named ligaments that we won't dwell on, but you have like metatarso, phalangeal, sorry, sesamoid, phalangeal ligaments, sesamoid, phalangeal ligaments. You have this thick ligament in between the sesamoids, the intersesamoid ligament, and then you have collateral ligaments and all kinds of, gets to be kind of alphabet soup. You can see all the different terms here. So I just show these medial and lateral ones to show that really what you can appreciate is if you look medially, this abductor hallucis, tendon, flexor hallucis, they all kind of blend together and form this really thick, low signal MRI tissue that you should be able to sort of follow from proximal to distal to reinforce the first MTP. There's uh, oblique ligaments, uh, collateral ligaments. On the lateral side, you have these this oblique adductor and the, and the um, transverse adductor coming in. <clears throat> so let's get away from the cartoons and look at some actual MRI pictures because hopefully this will help you understand it just a little bit better. So this is supposed to be oriented the same as this. And as I go back and forth. So as we go, here we are plantar. So this is the FHL tendon here. It's like a T1 weighted scan. So it's all low signal. Here's the medial and the lateral sesamoids. So these muscles and tendons coming in to assert of the sesamoid should be the flexor hallucis brevis here. And you may see a component that's from the oblique head and the transverse head of the adductor. Like this is going to be the transverse head, oblique head coming in here. Okay, like so oblique head, transverse head. And just notice as we go along here, forgetting about all the terminology, what happens is all this low signal stuff, all these tendons and ligaments end up rather blending together to form this really pretty thick complex here that binds the sesamoids to the proximal phalanx and so on. And then as we get to like the mid sesamoid, sorry, mid metatarsal head level, collateral ligaments, some of these accessory sesamoid ligaments and so on. So it's a little bit confusing, but um, it's sort of tractable. Now look at these axials here. So T1 weighted and T2 fat suppressed. This one is a fairly normal example. The patient has some bone edema and probably a little cartilage degeneration in the first metatarsal head here, but the capsule ligamentous complex is intact. So let me come a little bit more proximal here. And we find at the level of the metatarsal head, the lateral and medial sesamoids, here's the FHL tendon. And so this black thing in between the two, that's the intersesamoid ligament. Okay, so that's, that's the one that keeps the two sesamoids from splitting apart. And then as we go more distally, you can pretty much see that things are, you know, 
contiguous all the way across. And if you follow, for example, something like this, if I scroll back and forth, it should be able to follow that structure to the phalangeal base here and then go in more proximally and so on. So here you can see things like here's, here's going to be the oblique head and that transverse head of the adductor. And then here's the abductor over here. Okay. So here's an abnormal then. So here's more proximally. And so this is pretty normal. Sesamoids, intersesamoid ligament. Now right here, there's an injury. So here's like low signal tissue, FHL, and there's increased signal right in that area there. There's partial tearing of that component of the plantar plate capsule ligamentous complex. And then more distally, things are actually okay. So the sort of cheap way to look at these things is try to follow things from proximal to distal, medial to lateral. And if you see like partial interruption or interruption of things, that qualifies as a turf toe type injury. This one is a little bit confusing, but this is the, um, this is the coronal version. <clears throat> Just to show again, pretty normal continuity here, continuity. It's the same one that I just showed, and it's a little bit tricky to see the actual injury here, but it's between the medial sesamoid and this tissue that should be more uniform going down towards the proximal phalanx as a partial uh, partial tear. This would be like a grade two turf toe injury on MR. The sagittals are good to look at as well. Let me just stop on that for a second because that um, <clears throat> illustrates this injury pretty nicely. So. Um, if I come about to the midline of that great toe, there's the proximal phalanx here, metatarsal head here, okay? And notice that there's this tissue that comes off the base of the proximal phalanx. That's like the official plantar plate right in there. And then it blends in with all this other ligamentous uh, tendon stuff. The important point I wanna make is that at the midline here, it's often discontinuous or shouldn't say discontinuous, but there's like a little recess there that could be normal. So we don't wanna call this in and of itself, a plantar plate injury. As you come, let's see, this is going more, um, more towards the lateral side. So this, this lateral side is fairly much intact there. You can follow in continuity there. But as I come over towards the medial sesamoid, <clears throat> it's right here where you have medial sesamoid, a little bit of heterogeneous tissue, heterogeneous tissue. That's the partial tearing of that component of the plantar plate in this patient. Pretty crazy, actually, to be looking at this stuff, but but it's um, important in uh, in sports. So how about a couple of cases? Then we'll be uh, we'll wrap up. This is a patient uh, case I got from Dr. Hunt, who's our one of our foot and ankle surgeons here, and um, this athlete had injured his toe in high school and uh, did didn't have any surgery. I don't know if the nature of the injury was really known, but then he re-injured his toe starting out in training camp and. It's subtle here, but there's a little ovoid ossicle here at the proximal phalanx, like first MTP. He had traumatic hallux valgus, so ang lateral angulation at the MTP. Um, sesamoids were pretty much okay. But we did a CT scan to look at that, that ovoid thing. And it's actually, it's, so it's a fracture of the proximal phalanx here. See it on the 3D reconstruction and 3D with volume rendering to show the FHL tendon there. So what had happened was he had this avulsion fracture and he probably had it in high school and then it like re-injured. <clears throat> so if we try to assess that with MRI, it does qualify as a, as a plantar plate type injury, but it's basically one, of, one that's more of a kind of a bony, maybe bony turf toe is the way you'd, you'd look at it. So here's proximal phalanx, metatarsal head. Here's that fracture fragment with edema on either side. And it's a little bit rounded off going along with it being somewhat chronic. Here's the sesamoids here. Um, and so here's fracture fragment, edema, fluid interposed. So he was treated eventually with uh, resection of this fracture fragment, reattachment of that uh, plantar plate to the phalangeal base. And then he had that hallux valgus. So they went and actually released the adductors to get rid of that angular deformity. Different college football player from several years ago who injured his toe, rule out turf toe, and the radiograph showed um, single part medial sesamoid and a two part lateral sesamoid. And the, the discussion always comes up, is this 
is this developmental or is that fracture? And a lot of times we can't really tell. His opposite side didn't help us because it was unipartite sesamoids in both the left foot. <clears throat> now, one rule you can use is that if it's a fracture, normally um, the two parts of a fractured sesamoid add up to be about the same as the one part of a, of a unipartite sesamoid. And so these two pieces sort of look bigger than that put together. So you'd kind of bet on this being more of a, of a, a developmental bipartite, right? So like taking that again, so here's medial and lateral. So if this one were happened to fracture, you'd see a line across there, but these two parts would add up to be about the same as that part. Slightly useful at times. So it didn't really matter that much in this athlete. So here, here's a T1 weighted scan and a fat suppressed T2 where you have the, this is the fibular sesamoid, one part, another part. And there's way too much fluid in between those two components of it surrounding edema. So even if this was like a developmentally bipartite one, it should have like a fibrous or cartilaginous union between those two and not fluid interposed between the two. So on the sagittal view, <clears throat> let's look at this this lateral part first. So here's that fibular sesamoid. The two parts here separated out a little bit with fluid all the way through. And in addition to that, on the medial side, the sesamoid itself was intact, but he had a full thickness tear of this sesamoid phalangeal ligament. Okay, so this would be considered a grade three turf toe type injury. Um, I think he was just treated conservatively though, and um, these things can tend to heal so the surgical indications are kind of evolving over time, but but definitely surgeries are being done um, to repair these types of things. Uh, one last case of a pump returner hyperextension injury, and here you can see he actually split both his sesamoids apart. They may have been bipartite to start out with, but they're distracted um, <clears throat> in both medially and laterally. And this, this poor kid ended up in an awkward cast for six weeks with that great toe in a spica type thing with plantar flexion um, to kind of keep those pieces together um, and I think ended up doing okay. So part of the, um, you know, importance of this injury is that not just the injury itself, but what it leads to if it's not treated or recognized. And one of those things is, is cartilage degeneration, osteoarthritis, like in this patient with some subchondral cyst formation and chondral thinning here um, <clears throat> and the great toe. So most of these are going to be non-operative, and so our input doesn't usually get um, confirmed in terms of what our grading is. Um, indications are all relative, and it depends on the surgeon and their experience, but like big capsular avulsions with unstable joints or sesamoids that retract or diastatic, the traumatic hallux valgus, loose body, or failure of conservative therapy may need, lead to um, repair of the uh, turf toe. So that's the end of our tour on turf toe. And I want to again thank you for your attention and hope that you learned a little bit from that.